Welcome guys. In this video, I'll show you the top 20 best tips and tricks that you need to know as a PUBG mobile player, and it will help you to get better at this game. By the way this is my best of 2021 tips and tricks compilation. Starting with the tip number 1. Whenever I find myself hiding in a corner or holding in a corner situation like this, I always switch to FPP because sometimes the character will block my view, example like this. In these situations using FPP is a good choice. Also, remember that FPP gives you a wider view so you can watch two directions at the same time. So I highly recommend you to learn this skill. Because finding yourself in a corner situation is very common, and by switching to FPP could increase your chances of winning in that fight. And now to the tip number 2. Suppose you're in the middle of a gunfight and your health is so low, so you have to use health kits to heal up, but you're covered by multiple enemies. So in this type of situations, you have to throw the Molotov in the entrance area, where your enemies will most likely to come from. The Molotovs will burn for about 9 seconds, that's enough time for you to use the first aids. But even if the players came through the Molotov, they will lose about 80 to 90% of their health, so you can kill them easily, or some enemies will get knocked immediately. So always remember to throw Molotov while healing in the middle of a gunfight, this will definitely save you in those situations. Anyway moving on to the tip number 3, if you ever find yourself in a situation where you run out of ammo in an extreme close combat gunfight example like this. In these type of situations, you need to try to get behind the enemy example like this. Try staying behind the opponent until the weapon reloads, once it's reloaded then start shooting. Or you could simply circle the opponent example like this. I mean it's gonna be very difficult for the opponent to shoot at you, especially when you are rotating behind the enemy example like this. Moving on to the next trick, so when you open a grenade to throw, everyone under 20 meters can hear the grenade pin opening sound, so they will run away knowing that you will be throwing a grenade, but there is a way you can make them not hear the grenade opening pin sound, and it requires a teammate of yours, so when you are about to open the grenade, tell your teammate to shoot randomly. Now the grenade pin sound will get mixed with gunshots, making it impossible to recognize the grenade opening pin sound. And trust me your enemy will not hear anything except gunshots, so they will have no idea that you're throwing a grenade, unless you expose yourself, want to learn how to throw perfect grenades then check out my grenade guide it will help you. Now to the tip number 5, if you are getting pushed by your opponents while being stuck in a room, it's always a better option to wait for your opponent to rush inside, because you know the enemy will have to come through the door, so in these situations always focus on the door. And maintain your aim and crosshair placement around the head level, so when they come inside you can get those instant headshots. Tip number 6, if you're pushing into a room or a building, you need to double check these following things. The first one would be to check for your helmet and vest, if you don't have them, then I highly recommend not to push inside, because there is a possibility that you could get knocked in just one shot. And the next one is to know your enemy's location, so when you go inside, you will know exactly where to shoot at. And lastly, analyze the situation for example, how many enemies are inside, and what weapons they are using, if you notice any airdrop weapons it is risky to go inside, because your opponents are most likely looted an airdrop which means they will have level 3 helmet and vest, and 2 airdrop weapons, which makes it way more riskier. Tip number 7. When you are entering through a door, you need to enter, by jumping example like this. You need to hit the jump button at this exact location, which will increase your movement speed. The main reason why I recommend you to jump is because, when you jump your character will gain a lot of speed which makes you a harder target to hit, and your enemy will miss the shots. I mean it is very difficult to track someone jumping like this. I use this trick all the time, as soon as I jump, it will be very hard for the enemies to shoot at me, because I'm moving too quickly plus it makes me less vulnerable. And now to the tip number 8, how to win against jump shot, a tactical tip. As soon as you see your enemy jumping, you need to start moving in the opposite direction, or in other words, if your joystick moving towards the right side, you need to rotate it into the opposite direction example like this. Doing this will make your opponent miss all the shots. If you're wondering how this works, here is the opponent's view. And let's try to slow down the footage. You can clearly see that I'm moving towards left side, and then suddenly I started moving in an opposite direction. 
so this will mess up the enemy's aim, so they miss all their shots. Now the tip number 9, a grenade lineup for the apartment buildings this one is my favorite, because it kills the rooftop campers. This grenade lineup is very simple, just jump out from this window, and then aim for the terrace wall, and throw it, the grenade will bounce back into the rooftop, and it will most likely knock anyone near this door area, or it will do some serious damage. If you want to be more safe, you could climb up the window frame like this, and then lean out, and aim for the rooftop's wall, and throw the grenade, it will bounce on the rooftop exactly where the campers would be holding. Now to the tip number 10. It's easier to shoot with the pistol in first person mode, and also it's kinda satisfying to use a pistol in first person view. By the way, this is my personal opinion, and after some testing, I just think that it's somehow easier to aim in the first person mode with a pistol. There is no different in the recoil of a pistol, but it's kinda more comfortable to use the pistol in FPP mode, what do you think, is it easier to shoot with a pistol in FPP mode? Let me know in the comments. Tip number 11. Whenever you're rushing into a house, and you know there is an enemy camping inside, throw a grenade in the house, and it might make the enemies go deaf for up to 5 seconds, so they won't be able to hear your footsteps while you're rushing. Tip number 12. So whenever you're looting an airdrop or flare drop, and there is an extra weapon from supply drop that you don't need, leaving it over there could be a problem, because when other players comes, they can pick it up. So what you could do is hide the weapon somewhere by dragging it around or just simply drop it a bit far from the airdrop example like this. You could also do the same thing if there are any level 3 helmet or vests, hide them a bit far from the airdrop. So if any players comes to check that drop later, it says it's empty, and they would mostly think that someone looted it, nobody is gonna search around the airdrop, so hiding airdrop weapons and level 3 helmet and vests can sometimes be helpful. So when should you switch to FPP? It depends on your situation, and I will show you some examples when to switch FPP. In this example, I am rushing towards the opponent because I know the exact location of my enemy, and he's hiding behind this cover. Switching to FPP in this type of situation will help you to focus on the enemy also it gives you a much better view for aiming and crosshair placement. Once again when your enemy is hiding behind some obstacles like this, and you decided to rush, switching to FPP will give you some advantages. Here is a side-by-side -side comparison of TPP and FPP. So in the third-person perspective TPP, there is a possibility that your character might be blocking your view. And on first-person perspective FPP, most people say it's easier and satisfying to aim, and also you won't get blocked by your character in FPP, which is definitely an advantage. And now to the tip number 13. Don't stay too close to the window while shooting, sometimes your bullets may hit the wall instead of the enemy. And also place your crosshair a bit higher than usual, or just simply aim at the head level, otherwise your bullets may get blocked by the window frame. And the next tip would be to switch to first person perspective, for example, here I am shooting in third person view, and the bullets are actually hitting the window frame instead of the wall. And now I switch to the first person view and shooting at the same wall again, so now the bullets are actually hitting at the wall. But as soon as I switched back to the third person view, the bullets are again hitting at the window frame instead of the wall. I don't know exactly what's happening here. Maybe the game mechanics are broken I think. And the next tip, when using FPP will give you more field of view, or a better view of inside. For example, in FPP you can see this box, and when I switch to third person view, you won't able to see the box. So just remember to switch to FPP in window fight situations to get an advantage. Moving on to the next tip, hip firing in FPP from a vehicle will give you some advantages. This is how the third person perspective will look while hip firing from a moving vehicle. And this is the first person perspective's view while hip firing from a vehicle. Once again, this is TPP, third person view. And this is FPP, first person view. If we do a side by side comparison, you will get these advantages in FPP better viewing angles, and most importantly you will able to focus on the target much better, and just like previous examples, aiming will be easier and it's satisfying to shoot. 
So always remember this, whenever you find yourself in car fight situations, and your opponent's vehicle is really close, just switch to FPP, and hit fire, because in FPP you get much better viewing angles, which will help you to focus on the target. The next tip, don't engage in a fight when you don't have any nearby cover. What I mean is, you see an enemy running in an open field, and you are also in an open area where you don't have any cover nearby. But you started shooting at the enemy anyway, later you messed up the spray, now you are in a big trouble because your opponent is going to shoot back at you, and you don't have any cover to hide. This is why I always recommend you to check for cover, before you engage in a fight with your opponent, make sure you have a cover nearby, when you have a cover, you can hide if you mess up the spray, a tree or a rock or some other type of obstacles that can provide you with some cover. The next tip is kinda similar, it's like waiting for your opponent to come out from the cover completely, so you can kill the opponent easily. Let's just say you see an enemy running, the first thing you have to do is check if the enemy has nearby covers, if the enemy does have any nearby cover, it's not worth shooting, unless you have really good spraying skills. If you do shoot at the opponent anyway, then the enemy will hide behind the cover immediately, now the enemy knows your location. So this is why, I always wait for the opponent to come out from their covers completely or halfway through at least. This gives you some extra time to take down the opponent. Once again, remember to check for your enemy's nearby cover, when you see them running like this, wait until the enemy is halfway between covers, and start shooting. It will be easier for you since they don't have any cover to hide. Now the last one, this tip is especially for those people who don't use jump and climb separate, you can still do jump shot near a wall example like this. If you face towards the wall and hit the jump button you will climb up the wall, so what you have to do here is, you need to face towards sideways or in a 90 degree direction to the wall. Now you will able to make that jump shot without climbing up the wall, in both directions. If you face towards the wall in any way while jumping, you will definitely climb up the wall. Before you going to do the jump shot make sure that you're facing in any other direction than the wall, here is a slow motion. Anyway that's all I got for this video, I hope you learned something new, if you did hit the like button and subscribe for more upcoming videos like these, see you guys in the next one.